From Machine Gun to Pop Gun, this is how Machine Gun Kelly went from Alcatraz to Alter Boy. There's no doubt that Machine Gun Kelly was a criminal, but a killer? Not so much. Born in 1895 to a well-to-do family from Memphis, Tennessee, George Kelly Barnes was a bootlegger who, in 1928, did a stint in prison after being caught selling illegal liquor. While he was locked up, he befriended bank robbers who taught him the ropes. When he was released in 1930, Kelly married his girlfriend, Catherine Thorne. She not only encouraged his criminal career, but helped create Kelly's reputation. It's believed she bought him his first machine gun and gave him the nickname George Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly's my little baby. According to Showbiz Cheat Sheet, he went from committing a string of robberies to kidnapping. In 1933, Kelly abducted wealthy oil tycoon Charles Urschel from his home in Oklahoma City. Days later, Urschel was released after Kelly was given the $200,000 ransom he demanded, according to Alcatraz history. However, this was already the beginning of the end for Kelly's criminal career. Serial numbers on the bills given in the ransom, along with Urschel's testimony and a tip to the FBI, led them straight to Kelly and Thorne. After a week-long manhunt, Kelly and Thorne were found in Tennessee. Both were convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Kelly was sent to Leavenworth Prison in Kansas, where he had previously served two years for bootlegging. However, his time in Leavenworth this time was even shorter-lived. Kelly, ever the talker, defiantly told guards that he was planning to escape from Leavenworth and travel to Cincinnati to break out Thorne from prison. Naturally, prison officials did not take kindly to these threats, and in 1934, decided to transfer Kelly to Alcatraz. According to City Experiences, the 39-year-old Kelly arrived with 106 fellow inmates from Leavenworth. Alcatraz had only opened its doors weeks before their transfer. The prison was purportedly designed to instill fear in criminals like Kelly, who were revered and had gained notoriety for their many crimes. Additionally, government officials hoped that Alcatraz would deter those who were thinking about becoming criminals for the purpose of fame and glory. Despite boasting about his crimes at Alcatraz, City Experiences reports that those who got to know Kelly saw another side of him. Willie Radke, a fellow inmate whose cell was next to Kelly, said, He was a deeply reflective and intelligent man who was well-liked by most of the population. At Alcatraz, Kelly was referred to as prisoner number 117. All that's interesting writes that his fellow inmates called him Pop Gun Kelly. Clearly, they didn't seem to take him too seriously. While some prisoners at Alcatraz praised him, others felt like Kelly did not fit in with his surroundings. They also noted that after one of his companions died, prison life seemed to take a toll on him. Even so, Alcatraz history tells us that Kelly was a model inmate. He worked in the laundry and became an altar boy at the prison chapel. He played bridge on the weekends and read often. At one point, Kelly also had an office job at Alcatraz. In prison, a man will do most anything to keep his mind occupied. SF Tourism Tips states that life at Alcatraz, however, was incredibly hard. Prisoners followed a required policy of silence, and their day began at 7 a.m. and ended at 9.30 p.m. This undoubtedly contributed to Kelly's eventual depression. Later in his sentence, Kelly began to be remorseful for his crimes and believed that he and Thorne had been punished too severely. He even wrote to Urschel, but never got a reply. One guard noted that Kelly became solemn when he received letters from family members. Kelly spent 17 years at Alcatraz before he was transferred back to Leavenworth Prison in Kansas. He died there on his 59th birthday in 1954 from a heart attack. According to City Experiences, he never saw Thorne again. The Crime Museum states that she was released after serving 25 years and went on to live a quiet life in Oklahoma until her death in 1985. 